Are you hiding and scared to step into your power? Okay, here we go. Are you hiding and scared to step into your power? Here's the solution. One, do the thing you fear the most and the fear of that thing disappears. That's the immediate and fast answer. And I could elaborate on that, uh, but in the interest of succinctness and speed, I'll leave it at that, then invite you into an opportunity to step into your power, to be seen by women who want to see you. Other women who also want to be seen, who are hungry for their full power, who have been hiding, and who have been scared to be seen. You can do so by signing up for my Womanhood Initiation, which is happening March 28th. Womanhood Initiation, March 28th. If you have been hiding, scared to be seen, and you're ready to step into your power and practice this exercise of doing the thing you fear so that the thing that you fear ceases to be a fear of yours. So that's one thing to start with. Go ahead and register with the link in my bio. So I just created a piece of content. Hello. Hello, folks. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I'm live streaming on TikTok and Facebook. Today I'm discussing womanhood. I'm discussing hiding and being scared to step into your power and how to stop hiding and step into your power. I'm also talking about being fear of being seen, judged, and criticized, and how to face that. I already just shared with you the immediate, like, do the thing you fear. Uh, but so many people <laughs> don't do the thing they fear. Uh, but that's a simple version. If you like to the point, there it is, to the point. Do the thing you fear. And um, also, disconnect it from your body and your womb. That's something I've been getting a lot of DMs about. When healers, I've been getting a lot of messages from healers, women who either want to reach the masses as a healer, or um, they don't. As, oh wait, they don't necessarily want to reach the masses, but they definitely want to play a bigger game. They definitely want to make more money. Uh, and so, more content will be coming about connecting with your womb and your body. And then another problem is unclear on how to. Oh yeah, unclear on how to shape, how to share your story. Yeah, other, more content will be shared there as well. So one of the good things about me doing live streams here on TikTok is that it can be downloaded and chopped up. So today I'm gonna do things a little different. I actually used to do this when I first started, you know, halfway through my TikTok <laughs> life. Um, I would just go live and I would just create content live instead of just bringing a topic and talking about the topic. I would literally like create a piece of content, stop, create a piece of content, stop, create a piece of content, right? Uh, so I think I'm going to do that today. I think. Let's see how this goes along. Someone is here in TikTok asking me a question who doesn't have a profile photo. What's my rule here? So, hello, hello, hello. Thank you for liking the live, Miss Alice. Hello, hello, hello. Um, before I actually get into this, I'm saying this like y'all even know what this is. This, I actually picked this up from the airport and I really like it. I'm gonna look, go online and see where I can get like a bunch of them in different colors. I can carry this easily and just take notes wherever I am. Uh, Cause I, my, this is always going and I love to write things down. So before I get started, let's talk about Italy. Italy, 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 la dolce vita, niente, dolce fa niente. Hey, Miss Alice, good. I'm glad you like the con you love the content. Let's talk about Italia, September 16th to the 24th. Italy, September 16th to the 24th. Who would like to come to Italy with me for eight days for the expected fun stuff like the food the shopping walking the streets and feeling like you're in a movie uh, but also the womanhood stuff coming into your body with other women it's a game changer so women gods gather happened this past weekend are you aware of women gods gather for those of you who are here let me open up my other wall 
Women Goss Gather in Atlanta occurred this past weekend. And I did a lot of processing and note taking after it was all over because it also gave so much to me. I'm actually right now processing some sadness because of some a decision I made, some clarity, some breaking, but just off. Just like, wow, when you really start telling the truth, it is extremely emotional. And, oh, let me share this. I caught myself wanting to lie to myself earlier today because something was hurting so much. And I didn't like the hurt. And I caught myself, literally, I caught myself in the act distorting it. This is how that shit goes. We don't like it. So we cre I was looking to create something new because I wanted another feeling. Because I didn't like how the truth, which was the truth, truth that I was sharing. And what I also was like, okay, let me, even as I'm saying this right now to you, I'm like, okay, go back to the truth and clean it. There's a way to clean our truths to make sure it is so fine. Like if I just, if somebody just came to me and said, well, now what exactly is the problem? <laughs> or what exactly is this thing that, that you don't like how it feels? Right? Like, it comes like that. Hey, Luminous, what's up? Welcome. So, Italy. It's eight days, September 16th through the 24th, I think. Whatever. It's eight days, starting September 16th. And it's what I said. So, let me read. It's going to take too much time for me to look it up. But uh, it's really for women who not only want to do the technical work. When I say technical work, I mean... Uh, we're going to be touching our bodies, touching each other's bodies, getting into our breath, um, really waking up our true desires. It's another thing that came through in Atlanta over the weekend. Oh my God, there's just so much work to do. And I feel so much sadness about just the truth of where we are as, as a species and how... Oh, You've heard about when you have a vision that's so big that it it requires that you change. Like there's no way you could reach the real vision as you are today. So I'm saying this to myself as I'm saying it to you. So what's your vision? What's your real vision? You know that the you that you are right now cannot, and that there's so much shifting in you that's required to actually materialize the vision. Yes or no? Thank you for liking the live jazz. Hello. Right, the you that, the I that I am now, even though the seed of who I am to be is here, there's such a development that's required. And what happens is so many of us just quit along the way. I've been guilty of this. We quit along the way because it hurts. It's painful. We're alone. It's really true that it's a lonely experience, no matter if you have a husband and all the things. It doesn't matter. When you are truly becoming that seed that's in you in order to materialize the vision, it is lonely, it is sad, it is difficult. And I'm just watching myself change in real time, get information I don't like, and really absorbing that and not like quitting. Or not. And so one of the things that I did not want to accept and I, I'm still accepting it as I'm talking to you right now because it is, it's an admission. When you really start telling the truth about things, it's an admission. And I don't like this admission. I don't like it. Why? Because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feed the part of me that feels so much joy with the other reality that I've been living in. And the admission is how underdeveloped melanin dominant folk are. See, I know who we are. Like, I really know who we are. Not in like this, we come from royalty and I'm a child of God. Like how we just, we, we just talk about this stuff online. Like, 
we put on a beat face and a Gucci outfit and get on a TikTok video or an Instagram video and do some sashaying and yes, cause I'm this and I'm a, mm, and we just talk so much and you know what I mean? Run around trying to make sure we got every hair laid and we got the back <laughs> and be the most underdeveloped when it comes to the true materialization of our visions, our true vision. Yes or no? The God-given vision. The one that keeps you up at night. The one that no matter how much you try to do something else, it pulls and tag. Or whatever is the desire. Whatever is the desire. Does somebody want to say something to me about that? Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Relate to what I'm talking about? Get hit with some hard emotion. Oh my God, the level of tantrum that will come out of a 45-year-old woman with her Birkin bag and her port real estate portfolio when an emotion hits her. That <laughs> the actual development that it takes to be an actual leader. Now, I know not all of us are looking to be leaders, but just the truth of being a human being who's growing, just the truth of being a human being that's growing. Miss Alice says facts. Jazz says, yes, I totally get what you mean. And so I have not wanted to just really accept, and this has been some years, you all. I, I know you might be new to me, so I don't, right? So you, you, you haven't really seen my growth, my transformation, my failures, my successes. But um, I have been speaking to the, the highness of us for years. I've been speaking to the highness of us for years. People aren't buying at that level. You know the level people buy at? Pain. When I talk to folks about uh, the, the, the frequency of who we are and the level of power and authority and responsibility here on planet Earth because of what's in our DNA and who we are, folks will love the con content. They'll, ooh, powerful. I know this. I find that they don't buy at that level. You know the level they buy at pain. They buy at the 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 uh, the masses, I should say. The masses, the majority buy at the pain level. Very, 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 very few buy at the power level. Miss Alice said, "I follow you for years. You're ahead of your time, but now you're on point." You see what I mean? Thank you for your honesty, Miss Alice. I really appreciate that. You see, she says she's been following for years. Have you ever spent any money with me, Miss Alice? Have you ever spent any money with me? This is a really good example right here. And I hate, let me just really let this be. I hate because I know. I know, I know, you see, she hasn't even bought. And you're saying, let me and let me ask you this, Miss Alice. Are you saying I'm on point now because of where you are? Because I've been on point. I've been on point. Are you saying I'm on point now because of where you are? You wanted to, but you didn't have it. Have what? Girl, you mean I've sold things for $27, $47, $97, free shit. This is not about you didn't have it. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. Folks buy at a pain level. They don't buy at a luxury, more than enough, abundant. Well, that just, it hasn't, let me say that. It hasn't happened over here. Let me, let me say, I ain't gonna say people don't. And I'm not cheap either. Like the, the cheap stuff I started to sell because I'm like, well, let me help people. Because so many people like Alice was coming around talking about saying this kind of stuff. And I'd be like, okay, let me do this $47 thing. And you know what would happen when I would do $47 things? Nobody would show up. They would pay and don't show up. <laughs> I've been doing this for 12 years, y'all. I'm not some new chick on the internet. I got so much data. Over, let's just even just say the last since 2019. I got so much data to show human behavior. And it proves every single time. 
low ticket, high ticket, online, offline, uh, the real authority that want. So anyway, um, it, it has saddened me and I have hated the fact that I need to, on some level, meet people at an elementary level. That, those are the words that keep coming up, an elementary level. Because although people might like to hear me talk to them in elevated ways, they might like to watch my content to hear me talk to them in elevated ways. They don't move at that level. They move at a level of pain. I want to get out of this, whatever the pain is. I'm scared of, I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of being fat because I use being fat to keep myself invisible in the world and I don't want to feel like this anymore. I'm tired of playing small and my mom treating me like a little girl and I'm sick of this shit. So I'm going to buy your thing so I can not feel like that anymore. I'm mad as hell that I gave my best years to my husband who I, I never found my voice and now I'm middle-aged and don't know who I am and I'm sick of this shit and now I'm going to go live my life for me. Like that kind of level. And what has... Yeah, wait a minute. So, th this is some of the pain that I'm processing today. I've, you know, just been in that, just really just letting that sink in. And I felt some tears sort of rising. They didn't come up, but I even feel them right now rising in a way. And um, just, this is part of, like, when you have a vision that you're looking to materialize. And as I said earlier, the see who I am now is not yet fit for that. I'm fit for where I am and where I am going. And there's a development that's required. And if I were to reject what the data keeps telling me, if I were to keep saying, no, but I know who we are, but no, I got to, but no. When all the data is saying people are not responding to highness, when all the data is saying people are not responding to highness, they might like to sit on a TikTok live and hear me talk to them in highness but they don't pull out a wallet and pay at highness. They pull out a wallet and pay when they're sick of being fat or sick of niggas playing them, sick of hiding from their power, sick of, not, sick of struggling financially because they keep running and hiding and trying to play small. That's what make them pull out their wallet. And I don't like that. I want you to sign up because you know that more than enough is for you. But that's my want. I can, it don't matter what I want. I want. I want women coming in because they have visions that make them unable to sleep at night, that excite them so much, that they they just so excited to have the experience in Italy, or they're so excited to work with me because they they see the body that they and they know who they are and they know I'm the one to help them truly own full power. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm so thrilled. You know, it's like inspiration or desperation. Most, most people who are coming to me are not buying because they're inspired internally. They're buying because they're desperate on some level. And I hate that. And so I'm learning to accept that, to own that. Right. Jennifer said, like, when they are finally sick of things. Yeah. And it's been said repeatedly that people are going to move from two places, either from pain because they want to get out of the pain, which is what this is. I'm sick of things. So they're buying because they want to get out of the pain of being sick of it. Or they're buying because they are so inspired for the desire that they have. They're so inspired by... Would somebody like to tell this person with no platform what the rule is around here? Um, so, yeah. Um, so let me, I'd like to, hi, psychology pop. I think you're new here. <sighs> My name is Naima. I'm a power mentor. 
and I'm the founder of the Academy for Womanhood. I've been coaching and mentoring women around the world for 12 years. And um, I am, ho if you are a woman, meaning you were born with a vagina, okay, um, or I should, maybe a female and you're looking to grow up and become a woman and you're ready for the real deal of coming into your full power, I am leading my womanhood initiation on the 28th of March. And you can go to the link in my bio to sign up for that. And uh, it's interactive, so you need to be willing to be on camera. If you're unwilling to be on camera, that's fine. Then you should not sign up, okay? And it's interactive. We'll be sharing and getting to know one another. Um, and you'll be seen. For those of you who are scared to be seen, you've been hiding, playing small, and whether you're a business owner or not, you are ready to play bigger on the world stage, or even in your life. Uh, we're gonna really get into the pussy of it all. So, um, there's that. All right, so I'm gonna <sighs> create some more formal content while I'm here. Uh, let me see any questions to ask. Thank you for sharing that, Miss Alice. Thank you for the hearts, Jazz. All right. <clears throat> okay, very good. All right. I'll have to get around. So the problem, you're hiding and scared to step into your power. The solution, get around particularly women who are eager to see you shine, eager to see you grow up, eager to see you be true, eager to see you be full. Well then, dang, how the heck do you do that when you have been in hiding and isolation, nobody knows you, and you've been playing a small game? First, I invite you into my womanhood initiation. Details about that are with the link in my bio and you can register, but essentially it's an opportunity for you to be seen by women who want to see you be seen. An opportunity for you to come out of hiding and for you to feel what it feels like to be welcomed by women who want to see you shine and the truth of who you are. Other ways you can do that if you do not want to come into my womanhood initiation is start looking on the internet for women who are inviting other women to come into their full power. Be clear, women who are inviting you and other women to come into their full power. And I'd like to leave you with something, uh, leave you with a very fine distinction. No woman can be in her full power without full ownership of her sexual power, without full ownership of her true desire, which is often taboo and will be deemed by many people as inappropriate. If the full power that you seek quietly rejects true desire, if the power that you seek quietly rejects sensual power, pussy power, then you need to be clear and when you're looking for a community that that woman is also rejecting the same thing. I'm saying it this way because what I see on the internet now is a lot of uh, conversation about divine feminine, about power, about expression for women. And what practically every woman that I have seen is missing is the pussified element of the woman. Am I mistaken? Uh, don't we all, those of us who were born with a vagina, don't we walk around with this thing every day? Don't we watch ourselves hold our tongue? Don't we watch and feel ourselves lying all the time? Don't we feel tamping our desire down? Haven't we felt the swelling of our private parts when true desire wakes up and then we tamp it down because what are people gonna think? I don't know what to do. What am I gonna look like? What about the other side? How do I handle this? Don't we quietly know that other women are experiencing the same? 
And don't we on some level, even unconsciously know that the power that we seek that will allow us to be passionate, expressive, true, able to not be blowed over because of somebody else's judgment and blowed over because your own unconscious mind is talking to you negatively again, not being blown over because your mama say, don't you need to be responsible being blown over because a nigga got a problem with how you showing up in the world. Don't we on some level know that the power of true desire is the only thing big enough to swallow all of that? Yes or no? Yes or no? I would love to hear from you in the comments. Yes or no? So a really good freeing thing for you, potentially, could be for you to admit that, no, I don't want that kind of power. Because see, that's too much. <laughs> I won't be able to stay in this marriage if I come into that kind of power. My mama not going to like me if I come into that kind of power. I might lose my job if I come into that kind of power. So I'm going to trade the rest of my life for this smaller, more acceptable version. But I'm not going to say it so directly and clear and honestly. Instead, I'm going to say, well, you know, people don't like that. Girl, I gotta keep my job. Girl, I got bills to pay. Well, maybe when the kids grow up. Well, that doesn't really matter. My pussy has nothing to do with my passion, visibility, and authentic expression in the world. Nothing. My true desire has nothing to do with my passion in the world. Nothing. My true desire has nothing to do with my ability to move and to be able to be unafraid of how anybody, nothing. Nothing. And so therefore, I will find a smaller way, a much more acceptable way. So be mindful that when you're looking for a sisterhood, a community, a coach, a mentor, whatever you're looking for, that you be clear she fits the smaller version of what you're unconsciously looking for. However, if you're wanting beyond even wanting, if you require full power, all of who you are, who you were at one, two, three years old, and to bring her alive into your 35, 30, 45, 55 year old body, so you avoid ending up with alopecia in two years, so you avoid ending up with cancer in another year, so you avoid ending up sick and unable to get out of the bed, but don't know why. So you avoid resentment building up in your nervous system even more. So you avoid a dry pussy. And instead of being able to have voracious, life-giving sex with your husband or boyfriend, instead you say, I'm tired. It's been a busy week. It's been a busy day to avoid eating yourself to numb the dissatisfaction of your true voice. To avoid all of that, I invite you, come into my womanhood initiation, but be clear which path you're taking before you sign up. You can look at details with the link in my bio. Click womanhood initiation. And if you're ready for your fullness, I look forward to seeing you inside. All right, so that's another piece of content. So we had a breathwork practitioner on Sunday, 70 years old. We had a breathwork practitioner on Sunday, 70 years old in Atlanta. I met her seven years ago. Seven years ago, she did not have vitiligo. Seven years ago, she did not have vitiligo. And because somehow she had made it to 63 years old playing small, she thought she was cool on some level. She made it to 63 years old playing small. She thought she was cool on some level. But at 63, Vitilago showed up. Vitilago all around here. Vitilago all around here. Looking like she got burnt at 63 years old. I asked her, what happened? Because we got a chance to see each other in Atlanta this past Sunday. What happened? What, what, what happened? 
girl, that was for me keeping my voice small, keep keep it playing small, keeping my shit. And the shit erupted and came out in my skin. See, and now she's on the quest for her power. Now she got a fucking vigilance where I'm speaking. I'm passionate. I'm really doing the things that are important to me. But you see, she only did that once the pain got great enough. You see what you see how that refers to what I said earlier. We too many of us, particularly in the melanin dominant community, we don't invest in our growth and our womanhood and our power when we are delightful and excited about our desires and visions. We make commitments after we end up with vitiligo. Mm -hmm. After we end up with cancer, oh, and your breasts are gone or whatever. You had to get some cysts removed. You were in the hospital for a week or two and you had to get a cyst removed. <laughs> because you were so busy trying to live the womanhood according to your husband's version of womanhood. <laughs> Seeing yourself through his eye. I know a lot of melanin dominant women respect R.C. Blakes. Anybody here respect R.C. Blakes? Even the great church talking Mr. Peacher Pastor R.C. Blakes said, if a woman sees herself and her womanhood entirely through her husband's eyes, she will fail. But that's what so many of us are doing, right? We see who we are, what we should be doing, how we should see ourselves, what makes us valuable and worthy and good based on what our husbands say to us. You self-sacrifice until exhaustion. Ah, what a good woman you are. You clean the toilets and mop the floors and do everything. You are a super mom. You don't get your deepest needs met. Oh, you're such a good woman. <sighs> you never pursue your dreams. <laughs> you barely ask for help. Oh my God, I hit the jackpot. You're my queen. <sighs> oh. When we do that long enough, we fall into such a hypnotic amnesia until, until we wake up one day with chronic back pain. What is going on here? I'm doing all the right things. <laughs> I take care of my kids. I keep my house clean. I drink my green juice. I take care of myself. I take care of my husband. I give him sex. I do all the things. Why do I have chronic back pain? What is going on? Well, it's fine. I, I have to cook for the kids. Uh -huh. Maybe I'll look into it later. <laughs> oh, well, I have duties to do. I can't, you know, because I need to make, because my only identity is rooted in being a super mom, I need to make sure I keep that up because goddamn, who else am I if I'm not that? Oh, and here we are four fucking years later, and now this back pain has moved its way around, and now I've got migraines, now my pussy dry. I'm telling my husband I'm tired. I don't want to have sex with him. What is going on? I'm doing all the right things. And then voila, cancer. How? Mm -hmm. All because your whole identity as a woman was based on the lens of your husband, boyfriend, baby's father, whomever. And from that place of pain, where your body gives up and says, we have waited and waited and waited for you to give us your undivided attention. We have waited for you to center us the way you have centered everyone else. And we couldn't wait anymore. You have had us working overdrive for the last seven years, and we're tired. 
So here's cancer. Here you are. Here's cancer. So you can spend the next two weeks in the hospital thinking about your life choices over the last 15 years. Yeah. And from that bottom place in the hospital bed, you finally get the clarity of thought and the conviction to say to your fucking self! Because when you saw the inspiration, that didn't move you. When you saw the possibilities for the manifestation of your dreams, that didn't move you. When you realized that you were getting crows feeding your eyes and you were aging and your time was limited, that didn't move you. <laughs> when you realized that you waste hours of your life every day on TikTok, that didn't move you. <laughs> Noticing that you were fat and eating yourself out of anxiety and nervousness and just gaining weight because of this increasing anxiety, that didn't do it for you. That didn't get you to center yourself and start telling the truth. So here's cancer. Will that do it? Here you go. Will that do it, darling? Here you go. Uh, am I exaggerating here? It, it, uh, it, yes, no. So, this is one of the things that, this is some of the acceptance. Yeah. This is some of what I've been required to accept. This is why I hold the standard that I do. Mm -hmm. Womanhood Initiation, March 28th. Womanhood Initiation. If you're ready to grow up and become an unapologetic woman who designs her life on desire's terms, her true desire, come. You can register right now with the link in my bio. <clears throat> Jazz said, yeah, honestly, I made this decision after a near-death experience. See? You see? So let's talk about Italy. Let's talk about Italia! Eight days, September 16th. Italia. September 16th. If you are ready for beauty, so this is inspiring. If you're not, if you're only moved by pain, then you won't like this and you can go ahead and look for something else that speaks to your pain. So this is not about pain. This is inspiring and beautiful where I'm getting ready to go. That's what I prefer. So I lived in Italy and a lot of France too for four years. I am turned on and lit up and moved by beauty. Where I like to dine, and I'm not saying I won't go to a hole in the wall, but I love beautiful restaurants, I love beautiful jewelry, clothes, I love beauty, I love jewelry, gold, I love beautiful things. Hello, Island. I am inspired and moved by beautiful things. I enjoy looking at beautiful things, myself, other people, environments. That was actually one of the joys of being in Atlanta. I was in Little Five Points, and I don't want people with no profile to speak, so just, I don't like it. I was in Little Five Points, and there were, oh my God, the level of beauty. One particular day, I went to Target, the pharmacy clerk, gorgeous. As I was walking through Target, Gorgeous. Then I walked outside and this other woman had a beautiful outfit. I went gorgeous. I was just like gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And one thing I noticed is that men were expressive. They were looking and hi and hello. And I love that. And uh, so 
that was one of the joys of being in Atlanta this past weekend. But um, Italy is beautiful. So indulge me for a moment. <laughs> so uh, the first time I went to Italy, I was 21 years old because I thought I wanted to be a fashion designer. See, I've been moved by beauty for a long time. And when doing my research, if you do research about fashion and fashion school, Italy is going to be on the top of the search results because it is the world destination for beauty, shopping, food. And I went there when I was 21 and it changed my life. When I left after the summer, because it was a summer program, when I left, as we were texting down the runway to go back to the United States, I was crying because I was, I didn't want to leave. And I remember declaring to myself quietly, for those of you who have declared to yourself quietly about something, I said, I don't know when and I don't know how, but I'm moving to Italy. That's when I was 21. And I fell asleep in my life like so many of us have. I got, well, I was married at that time, like all the things, right? School, work, da, da, da. And when I finally woke up to my life again, that memory, that declaration came back to me. And in 2015, I moved to Milan, Italy. Well, when I went, it wasn't a move to stay. It was a plan to be there for seven weeks. That was the plan. Go to Milan, Italy, seven weeks. And we'll figure it out along the way. After around week five, when I was looking at the fact that, oh shit, I'm supposed to be going back to California after this, I was like, one, I didn't want to go back. Then I started thinking like, why am I going back? And it was like, um, there's no reason for you to go back, so stay here. <laughs> Seven weeks turned into four years. And I spent some significant time in Paris as well. And so why uh, Italy is being chosen for our destination in September on the 16th is, one, my soul rests there. And I like who I am when I'm there. And I've placed a bunch of other reasons. If you go to my wall right now, a video was uploaded this morning sharing, what, seven, eight reasons why to come. The next some content I was thinking about posting was, why come? Well, you tell me why come. <laughs> Your late grandpa's birthday, yeah. And um, so let's start with the feeling. I used to compare... Paris and Milan to, or you could even say all of Italy. Italy feels like going home to see your um, your bougie grandmother, or she not, maybe she's not bougie, but going home to see your grandmother. And Paris feels like going to see your bougie aunt. <laughs> so, a lot of people don't know that Italy um, has history of being a fascist country because of its former dictator who he went down. I think he was killed ultimately. Um, and um, a lot of people complain about Italy. When you really start getting into the workings of it, right, a lot of people complain. And it's one of those countries where a lot of people complain about it and a lot of people love it. I see both sides. And the beauty what I love and appreciate that prevails, no matter how you complain or how you love it, what prevails is the feeling of family. In America, we only see family, or most places, I should say, many places. We only see, humans only see family as, you know, the people in your immediate bloodline, right? Parents, children, cousins, etc. And then if you're married, your spouse. In Italy, when you get into the community, for real, your family. I know a family in, in the hills, in the hills. One time I booked an Airbnb and didn't even realize it was in the mountains. Y'all ever did that? You booked an Airbnb thinking you was going to be in one part of town and you ended up in another part of town. <laughs> that happened to me. And I was like, oh, it was just astounding that I even did that because it wasn't even in Milan. Anyway, where I ended up on this particular visit, and this was after my four years. This wasn't even during the four years that I was there. But it was a reminder of the family feeling that's baked into Italy. Um, the way this family took me in, and we were in like mountains, mountains, meaning like you had to drive up a hill and wind for like 
seven minutes, five minutes, you have to wind. And so this was real mountains. This was well over 30 minutes outside of the city, okay? And the way these people took me in, I mean, I got invited to a private dinner party, like private, okay? Um, the neighbors, one particular neighbor, would bring me food. They made hand fresh food. That's another value of Italians, fresh food, garden food. I remember having a VIP day there with a client who came over from the United States. She's American and she had a gluten problem. In Italy, she was eating pasta bread, no gluten problem. Why? Because they don't process their wheat or any of the gluten sources the way Americans do. So when I say that they like to eat fresh food, this is what I mean. Um, and so I remember the, Mm, the spaghetti they would bring me. I was just like, is this real? <laughs> because of how delicious it was. And they oftentimes make their own spaghetti, the pasta for the lasagna, actual noodle spaghetti. It's insane. There's places you can go in Italy to watch people hand make pasta. So there's a particular flour that they use here in the United States. They process the hell out of flour. So when you're eating when you make spaghetti at home or pasta or uh, lasagna or anything that's using some kind of doughy thing that you boil or put in the oven, you're eating a, pro a highly processed item, which is why so many Americans have gluten problems all of a sudden. You didn't hear about no gluten problems 60 years ago. Um, and so that matters. And really the whole quality food is a European thing because y'all know already how much, how many chemicals I think there's over 800 chemicals that uh, the EU bans that America allows. That's a whole other conversation. And while I could go on and on and on, I'm going to let this beauty be the last one I discussed today. Fashion and style. Oh, I'm glad. What's your name, Jazz? I'm happy you're here. I'm happy you have Heal Your Ritual on. Tell me about, tell me what you love about it. Oh, Marina, hey. Hey. So, who here likes to shop? <laughs> like good shopping. Who here likes to look good? Who here likes beauty? Oh, my God. And the bounty of ways that beauty can happen. Beautiful buildings, beautiful meals, beautiful shopping, beautiful people, beautiful environments, beautiful music, beautiful architecture. So for the women who will be participating, I'm going to take you to see the men and dominant Jesus, who's in a town called Geneva. Geneva is, I think, a little over half an hour outside of Milan. I'm going to take you to see melanin dominant Jesus in the church. I'm going to take you on, I think for some of you, the best shopping you've ever experienced. And, and let me say, meaning, when I say the best shopping, I mean, if you want fine unique, yeah, fine things, unique things, well-made things. If those things are not of value to you, then you won't see this shopping as the best shopping you've ever done. I'm into fine things. I'm into well-made things. I'm into people caring about the items that they make. Like, you ain't gonna find me shopping at Macy's, okay? If you're into fine handbags, if you're, and when I say fine handbags, I, I do not see Gucci as a fine handbag, okay? We ain't gonna even get into that conversation, okay? Italy is the greatest leather supplier, the greatest leather source. So you're gonna get fine leather at wonderful prices because it is in such high demand. So there's lots of competition, okay? 
And then, come on, you guys have seen the pictures of Milan, Florence, Rome, Venice. And the beauty, <laughs> another beauty, of being in Milan is that Florence, Venice, Rome are all just a train right away. And Venice, Geneva, Florence, Verona, that's where the whole Romeo and Juliet story happened. You can actually go to where it all came from. But though Florence, Verona, Venice, even Napoli, I mean, it just really depends on how, how long you want to be on the train. But those ones I just mentioned are all within, I want to say, within an hour train ride, 45 minute train ride. Mwah, mamma mia. <laughs> it is exactly so much. So, oh, you talking about heal your witch wound? You talking about so much? If you are, then okay. But I'm thinking so much, there's so much beauty, exactly. One of the reasons why I went to Italy is not only because I already knew it was beautiful from my own experience there. Hey, 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 welcome in, those of you who are coming in on Facebook. Not only because of my own experience with the beauty of it all, but um, at that time when I went there in, I think it was June or July of 2015, I was aggressively transforming my relationship with wealth consciousness. And when I say wealth consciousness, I mean my whole nervous system, my whole body being willing and able to handle a lot of good all the time. Right? A lot of us, we cannot even handle lots of good because our nervous system freaks out when too much money, too much attention, too much love, too much courage, too much power, too much, we freak out. So we don't even have the capacity to have the things that we think we want. Right? And then we wonder, why can't I? And so one of the reasons why I went to Italy is because, and I went, I was very clear that I was going to be there at least seven weeks. And I went, I had been in St. Tropez, but I knew it was just a trip. I knew just a trip wasn't going to do it. Just a trip. I, I knew just a, no, I need deep, lasting change. I need deep, lasting change. And I said, I'm going to go to Italy for seven weeks. And that whole seven weeks, I was just impressing into my nervous system. More good. It was very intentional. I would wake up. First of all, I made sure I rented a place that spoke abundance to me. I'm giving you, here we go. Let's create a piece of content right now. Here are the ways that you increase your capacity for more good in your life. Ready? Let's go. When I say more good, I mean more money, more love, more attention, more affection, more power, more courage. This is what I mean when I say more goodness and expanding your nervous system, your body, your mind's capacity for more because you very well couldn't even handle if a large amount of money came into your bank account. If all of this attention came into your bank account, po I mean, into your life, positive or negative, if you just got a lot of negative comments, you might shut your TikTok down. If you got a lot of DMs with people saying, bitch, and you ain't shit, and I hope you die, and da, 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 uh, you would probably shut down your social media because you don't have the capacity to withstand the energy of more life, more life, more money, more courage, more visibility, more energy. Your normal might be sitting on TikTok lives, eating out of anxiety, doing the same thing, talking the same way on the phone with your mother and your husband and your children, driving the same way to work, making the same amount of money, doing the same things. And that is your nervous system comfort level. And your nervous system will never allow you to have more, do more, be more. So I'll share with you some things that I started to do very intentionally when I went to Italy for seven weeks with the intent to expand my capacity for more. First of all, I rented an Airbnb that spoke wealth to me. I didn't go shop. How many of y'all shop according to the price? You don't even look at the pictures. You shop based on the price. Too expensive, too expensive, too much. Nope, 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 nope. Or you see a photo that you do like, 
and the price is too high, you'd be like, girl, that's expensive. What make them think somebody gonna pay for that? Girl, that's too much. That's too high. You mean too high for you? You mean too high for you? Because somebody paying it. And do you want to be the woman, or not, who shops based on what you actually want? So the first step is you buy, or what I did was, I rented the Airbnb that spoke wealth to me. That when I looked at the pictures, I said, ooh, yes, this looks fabulous. And it was more than I had ever spent on an Airbnb. And I had had several Airbnbs up to that point. So number one, wherever you spend money from henceforth, make sure it's what you actually want, regardless of the price. Number two, if you're like, well, I actually don't have the money for what I actually want, and that's why I need to expand my capacity, Here's another thing I did when I worked on expanding my capacity and I didn't yet have the money to invest in a trip to Italy. I would go to either a four or five star hotel, go to the bar and buy an expensive drink. Now at the time, a $15 drink was expensive to me. What? <laughs> Girl, them drinks $15, I'm not going over there. This time, because I'm working to expand my capacity, I deliberately went to a place where I knew the drinks were high. And what I did was I got myself dressed nice, went to that bar, sat at the bar, and act like I'd be there all the time. Talking to the bartender, being friendly with people, sip slow. Sip slow, yeah. Make sure you get dressed. You can even Uber there if you want to have the feeling of being chauffeured. Uber there. Or if you choose to drive and they have valet, valet your car. All of this is expanding your capacity and normalness for more, having more good, having more abundance, having health, having attention, being served so your nervous system gets used to having more. You can go get a $10, $15 drink and leave a $2 or $3 tip. Okay? Then, I did this at a hotel. You might do this at just a restaurant. But then, if you choose to go to a hotel, four or five star, go hang out in the lobby. Go sit in the lobby like you have a, a suite upstairs. Go sit in the lobby like you have a suite upstairs and just hang out and look around. I just came from my suite. This is how you're talking to yourself. I just came down from my suite just to sit down and get some air. Just to look around. Relax. Take it all in. Make eye contact with people. See who else is sitting down there. Strike up conversation with them. They're probably visiting. Say to them. So what brings you into town? Strike up a conversation. Enjoy the conversation. Take your time. You belong there. You have a suite upstairs. You're in the lobby to get air and to connect with people and to shift your environment. You're doing this so that lots of good becomes normal to your nervous system. It's very important that your body is fully in on the experience. Do not rush. Do not be tight as you're doing it. When you notice that you're tight, <sighs> this is beautiful. Look at the decorations. Do they have sconces on the wall? Look at the drapes. Look at the other people. Smile at the staff. Look at the carpet, lean back, cross your legs, sing, enjoy the space, feel what it feels like to belong there. Feel what it feels like to belong there. Consciously and deliberately and repeatedly relax your jaw, Relax your shoulders. 
Relax your solar plexus and heart. Sink your hips into the chair. Let your legs hang heavy. Breathe. And look around. Look around. This is all nervous system work. This is nervous system work. You're welcome, Marina. This is nervous system work because right now, your nervous system cannot handle an abundance of attention. It cannot handle an abundance of money. It cannot handle help and love and lots of goodness. And if it were to come into your life right now, you would find a way to get rid of it. Would you like to continue doing that? Or would you like to be pleased and in high expectation that people want to help you? that of course people are gonna be talking shit because you're doing powerful things on the internet. And instead of you shutting down your TikTok, sending subliminal messages, scared of people, pushing people away, you own that you're an authority. So of course they're gonna have something to say. And the people who are going to adore you will adore you. All this work that I'm telling you about at the hotel, the bar, buying things that speak wealth and luxury to you, all of this is to mature your nervous system. The third thing I encourage you to do is start asking for ridiculous things. Yeah. You want it to be so ridiculous that a part of you feels ridiculous or ashamed of even asking for it. Did, did you hear what I just said? You need to ask for ridiculous things. What does that look like? Go to the store and ask if you can have this for free. Yeah, ridiculous. That's the point. You want your nervous system to have responses to what feels like ridiculous to your nervous system. You're dating somebody, you're married, tell your husband you want a house in Italy. Or whatever's ridiculous. Tell him you want a, 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 a stipend or a, a, um, what do you call that? Money every month of some ridiculous amount. Ask your mom to babysit your kids for two weeks out of the month. Come on. Ask for ridiculous things. Ridiculous. And follow it through though. Don't laugh. Don't be like, I'm just trying out this thing to ask ridiculous questions. So just hang in there. None of that. Ask it with, like you mean it. Follow the thing all the way through to the end of the answer and feel it. Feel how it feels to ask for it. Feel their response to you. The feeling is the maturing of your nervous system. Because right now when you get feelings you don't like, you do something to get it off you. You ignore it, you shut it down, you end the conversation, you lie, you look away, you go find something else to do, you give up on the desire. It's because your nervous system can't handle the inside. Your nervous system. <laughs> How many people can admit that they see this happening in their lives? And that's why your bank account stays the same, your housing stays the same, the people in your life stay the same. Who here can acknowledge that? Everything stays the same. <clears throat> Your nervous system will never allow you to have more, do more, be more. If the have more, do more, be more triggers it in a way that you cannot be with. I was trying to love my own post on Facebook. <laughs> it only let me like it. I'll love it later. <laughs> mm, thank you for following Melanie. Oh yeah, could you guys uh, share the live stream? I meant to ask that earlier. 
Yeah. True, true, true. Thank you for sharing the live stream, Jazz. Thank you for sharing the live stream. I'm getting ready to, oh, here we go. Now I can love my post. Yay. I was able to love my post. Yay. So I didn't finish talking, sharing about Italy. I didn't close out my content either. Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, so those are three ways to expand your capacity for more good. And that good could be whatever good you're ready to have quadruple and more of in your life. I hope this helps. Voila! <laughs> There's a share button somewhere around there. Can somebody help Island with how to, oh, Island, you did it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hello, my soul sovereign. Hello, Rainier, Rainier. Hello, April. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, Italy. So the deposit for Italy is $500 until April 5th. If you have any questions about Italy, it's called Women in Italy. We meet September 16th and we'll be there for eight days. You can DM me for more, more questions, inquiries, and to have a conversation about submitting your $500 deposit. After April 5th, the deposit goes up to $1,000. DM me with your questions. Okay, I wanna go get some water. So I'm gonna pause this and as soon as I figure out how, then I'm gonna go get some water. Oh, it looks like four people shared. Thank you so much. I'll be right back. I'm going to get water. Hey y'all, what screen screen left? Hold on one second. Okay. Oh, let me come in here.
Any questions or anything anybody here would like me to elaborate on? Because I am thinking about some other content I might want to create. Oh, okay. <clears throat> position before I create this content. Oh yeah. I have a question uh, that could influence the content that I'm getting ready to create. So um, uh, different women who I've worked with who part of their path to freedom is they want to share their story. They have a story that they want to share. And um, they're like, I don't know how to share it. I don't, you know, um, I don't know how to talk about it. I, it's so many pieces, you know what I mean? I've written it down and they're not sure how to bring the story together and then bring it out online uh, in a way that really captures the essence of who they are, the truth of who they are. Um, that can also be in service to other people. So like extracting some of the nuggets out of it and then conveying it in a way so when they're done, they really feel complete about it. Even if they need to tell the story three different ways, you know, uh, or three parts, etc., they want to be able to share their story. Do any of you here struggle with that? Or you want to share your story, but you feel overwhelmed by it all? You're not sure where to start? You, know, you don't know how to write in a clarifying way? Uh, how to articulate it, where to start, you know, what's the gold here, what am I really trying to communicate? Anybody, and please don't say something just because I'm asking. I only want to hear from those of you who truly have, you've either already tried, right? You've written down your story and it's a bunch of pieces and it's long. Like, that's what I want to hear from. If, if somebody here is dealing with that, if, if not, fine. But I just want to know, because if you have questions about it, I want to know what they are, because then I can potentially include them in the content that I'm getting ready to make. And I'll wait in case somebody's typing. Wow, three hours. Uh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. I wonder if I should get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of. I'm gonna get rid of my green screen for this. So I can figure it out. I'm gonna get rid of it. Oh, how are we doing? No, here we go. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> Miss Alice says, how to tie it. Miss Alice, have you already done this? Let me be clear. Have you already written your story? And, right, have you already started sharing your story online? You know, have you, like, how real is this for you? Because if you are talking about the family that you're a part of, 
it's sort of like you can't talk about American history without talking about African history, African Americans. So when you say to me how to time my personal experience with the family experience, well, they're one and the same if you're part of the family. You're part of the family. So um, it's like this. If I, y'all saw the video on my wall that went viral. And um, I was talking about uh, women wanting to, you know, do things and can't do them because of watching their mother be a certain way and some women still walking, walk around with their interaction with their mother, right? So when you tell your story, and I'm making this up, I'm not saying this is your story, but let's say part of your story is um, being married to an abusive husband, right? And you as the woman, like you chose that husband based on who you thought you were, which is based on how you were raised or how you, your dad, what you thought about what you and your dad, da, 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 da. So there's no way you can have a personal story without having a family story because who you are is an extension of the family that you've been with. So when you say you don't know how to put the family his story with your story, does that make sense with what I just said? because it's connected. You can't even be who you are without coming from that family. So it's all linked. Right, so it's magnifying because you've done the mirror work, but it, it remains the same. Like I know a woman who's also writing a, she's writing a novel, right? And she's writing a, Actually, she decided not to do the novel because she was only doing a novel as a way to still hide. Um, but when she decided, because it was a conversation we had to have about, do you want to do it as a novel? Because you know, you writing it as a novel is really a sneaky way to hide. Versus, and like, I don't, what's going to happen when people, you know, I don't want to expose people, that kind of a thing. Um, when she really wanted to tell it as her story, she didn't want to be under the cloak of a novel. And so when she got clear that it was going to be a memoir, everything that she was going to talk about was related to her relationship with her mom. So it's the same with you. The memoir about you is everything about your relationship with them. So just write it as that, assuming you see the connection. You know, in order for you to even write like that, you see the connection. You see what the, the woman that you are today is linked to your relationship with your mom. You see that the, the, the man you've chosen you know, where you, everything is linked to, so it's all connected. It's not a separate thing about how do I share my experience versus my family. It, there's no distinct, there's not separate. Um, all right, so let me. Okay. Um, If you're a woman who wants to tell your story or online, either through a memoir or a novel or through some content because you're selling healing and transformational products and services, but you've struggled with telling your story clearly, how to discern what's yours with somebody else's, telling the truth, drawing the nuggets out so it can really be in service to your audience, listen to this video. <coughs> the process, huh? The process that I use with my clients and helping them clarify their story is using what I call my ARC model. My ARC model is taking, simplified version of it is your before and your after. So before is, what was your like before the story you want to share, before the experience you want to share? So for example, if you're a young girl, if you're a woman who experienced some kind of trauma as a young girl, and let's say you started to experience that trauma at five years old. You would begin your arc with what life was like before five, before this traumatic experience. And so let's say that experience was you were joyful, you loved your mother, you really liked doing certain things. And so the arc would be what you were like after the, tra the trauma. So you can look at the arc like this. So if we go to the before, you were joyful, you loved your mom, you were excited about life, you felt seen and loved. After, when we go over the arc, 
we look at what you were like after, which was you became quiet, you became doubtful, you became a teenager who was angry and you would slit your wrists, right? Or you, you were promiscuous. All of that is the after, okay? Then, assuming you're selling some kind of transformational products, healing products and services, you want to look at what have you done to get yourself back to confidence, knowing who you are, powerful, etc. Basically, the girl you were before the trauma. So let's say you've done breath work as a way to get back to, or you want to speak to the, the, what's inside of the transformation that you're helping your people with. So let's say you do tarot as a means to help them find clarity. You do breath work. You do past life regressions. You do body work. Let's say those are all the things that you not only do with your existing clients or hope to do with your existing clients, but it's something you've also done with yourself to get your own self back to wholeness back to who you were before that five-year-old girl. You want to share that as part of how you've returned back to wholeness. And then you can invite people into experiencing that wholeness as well through your products and services because you were this, this joyful, happy girl before, after you were this promiscuous, angry teen who went on to be this codependent adult. As a result of all this pain, you started doing both body work, breath work, past life regressions, da da da, which caused you to then create this package to help other women do the same thing. And again, this package could be a book, it could be, you know, a memoir, a novel, it could be a transformational coaching package, a healing package, VIP days, other kind of coaching and uh, virtual sessions. And so you take that arc before and the after, you need to write all these down, your before, your after, what you did after, right? You did breath work, you did body work, et cetera. And then that is how people can see how you can help them. They see who you were before, they see who you were after, the pain you were in, which is so important that you clarify, what you've done to get yourself back to wholeness, the body work, the breath work, whatever you've done. And you let them know that my package, my book, my sessions, my memoir, my novel will help you return back to wholeness. So that's my solution for you if you are uh, any kind of woman, right? Speaker, healer, coach, teacher, or just a woman who wants to help other people with your story, I implore you to take my arc story and add it to find clarity and uh, uh, the real power and meat and nuggets of your story, your coaching package, your memoir, your novel, so you're not all over the place confused and ending up quitting. And so instead, you get your story out there and allow other people's lives to be transformed as a result. Okay, so that's a piece of content. <clears throat> Hi, Kiyama. Wonderful. This is what I would like to recommend. Um, my woman community. So one of the things that I'm going to be inviting folks into after, during, after the initiation on Thursday is my woman community, ultimately. The woman community is where we're going to get a chance to do this work that I've been talking about here, this clarifying your story. We might even start with that. Clarifying your story so you can bring it to the world. Um, we're going to be <clears throat> doing, playing alchemical games. We're going to be doing the work of expanding capacity, as I've talked earlier here about how do you prepare yourself to really start allowing yourself to have more good? All of this is going to be happening inside of the woman community. The woman community is $99 a month. I intentionally made it affordable. We're going to be meeting on Zoom once a month. Uh, anyway, all the details are with the link in my bio. I'm strongly recommending that those of you who have been here for a while already and you have been thanking me so much and you've been, you know, you know that this is valuable and you want community. 
you want to clarify your story. You're ready to be seen by other women. You're ready to feel in your body the freedom and liberation of being seen, of your voice being out in the world. I want you to sign up for a woman right now. I want you to put your money where your thank yous are. Or all this, specifically you, Miss Alice. Who else? Um, ja oh, ja oh, Jazz, for sure. Oh, yes, Jazz, you for sure. Uh, who else is here that I, I, you know. So it's ongoing. I expect for this community to stay around. Like, y'all, women need a lot of help, and it's going to take some time. This is not no quick wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. This is going to be your home. You need to commit yourself for a minimum the next year. $99 a month for the next year. <clears throat> I don't understand your question. How long for once a month? Oh, but it's not just that. I see what you mean when you say how long. However long we go. You know? Um, I would say probably max two hours just because, you know, folks need a break and things. But it could be one hour. It could be three hours. And there's going to be so much more. We're going to have a private group, although we're going to be meeting on Zoom once a month. Um, I'm going to have leaders who are going to be coming and playing games with you all. So we might end up meeting four times a month for different reasons. Like one week, we may be focusing on clarifying your story. Um, but here's what's going to happen. The development of a community is really going to be about you all expressing your voices. So if we have a variety of people who say, most people are saying, I'm going to work, focus on clarifying our voice. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to, that's going to be the focus. And then another week, we're going to be focusing on capacity. If you, if your nervous system gets too nervous with you doing powerful things, you need to be focusing on the week where we're focusing on capacity. Um, yeah, it's intuitive. It, it's, it's part of the collective, you know? It's like everybody's involved. You, you are leader. You will be practicing your leadership. And when I say leadership, I mean your voice. And what I would love to do is, so first of all, I want y'all to sign up who you've already been known. Oh, wait a minute, Miss Thang Thang. I, I, your name, your, your picture is familiar. Oh, okay, it's coming to me now. It's coming to me now. I know, I remember, I know who you are. I'll send you a message because I actually was thinking this the other day about you considering what happened. Yeah, I remember now. Okay. Um, uh, I'll, I'll park that for now. But the rest of y'all, here's what I would really like to do. Let's talk about it since y'all here. So today is what? Um, what's today? Friday? Today is Friday. I would, on Sunday... And I'm going to send an email. I will see. On Sunday, if I have five people registered, I want us to meet on Sunday to really start having conversations about what we need, about what you want the community to look like. I'm, I'm really going to like handle this, not only intuitively, but personal. And listen, let me just say this. One of my high-level clients basically told me that I was giving people too much for too little. And I told her, <laughs> this is a, an accomplished woman. I said, these people don't even know. I said, I have a mission to serve many, many more, many, many more, many, many more. And so many of you don't even know what you don't know. Like, you need a $99 thing for you to easily come into. And what's going to happen is your life is going to change it so much is going to happen then you'll and this happened in the past so i know it works financially where you're going to come into that and it's going to be great and then especially as it grows the people who want more exclusive attention or who want specialized work they're good those are the people who are going to pay for the two thousand five thousand ten thousand big bigger thing especially because the work that you're going to be doing at the 99 dollar level is going to expand you for more because see, right now, y'all can't even handle the more. You can't even, not all y'all, obviously, but I, the majority of y'all. <laughs> the data has said that that's the truth for the majority of y'all. And I told y'all earlier, part of why I've been bumping my head so much because I just didn't want to accept that so many of you are so elementary. It, it felt like I was, I didn't want to treat people like children. I didn't want to treat people like amateurs. I didn't want to treat people like <clears throat> beginners. It, something about it felt wrong. It just felt like that's not who they are. You know what I mean? But the behavior is showing that's exactly who you are at a nervous system level and um, a development level, right? And this is not to, you know, it's not like 
that's who you are fundamentally. It's that because you've been so removed from your power over time through whoever parented you, through <clears throat> you know media, through experiences that you have had, you you know your growth stops somewhere. And while you may be 35, 45, 55 years old, and like to everybody else, you look articulate, smart, accomplished, all that, you haven't been able to do the things that are most important to you because you're so underdeveloped. And so the woman community is gonna help you so much. It's grown, it's grown, grown. And so it's truth, striking truth. We're gonna play alchemical games. Um, that's where we basically engage in a lot of truth telling. We engage in pussy work, having you really start coming down into who you are down here, right? Breathing around it. Um, and it's so powerful. It, it, it'll, it'll, it's going to do what it's going to do. And then you'll, you'll experience what I'm talking about versus just hearing me talk about it. So who's going to sign up right now? I want to meet with y'all on Sunday. I want to meet with y'all on Sunday. I want y'all to sign up right now. Let's talk about it. Miss Healer, I want you to sign up right now. Miss Alice, I want you to sign up right now. Oh, look at Miss Alice. Hey, girl. Go ahead and sign up. Oh, ye ma. Oh. Oh, it's Kiyama. Hey, Kiyama. What does that mean? I like that. Kiyama. One Earth. Kiyama, are you signing up? Marina, are you still here? When you say I've tried so much, what are you referring to? The way you're tuning in intuitively. <laughs> so, Miss Healer, I want you to go sign up that what you know is being worked on will be worked on. And I don't even know what's going on with that. I told you I'm waiting. Where you was supposed to sign up, the page was not ready, but it is now. So where I'm sending people to go right now is where I want you to go right now. You go to the link in my bio and click woman. Yeah, you go to the link in my, and be careful because one says womanhood initiation. That's for Thursday. I want you to come to that too, that's free. And at the womanhood initiation, I'm inviting, we're going to have an experience and I'm inviting everybody into woman anyway. What I'm saying is for the people who register today, I want us to meet on Sunday. Yes, I'm talking to you. And I don't have your name because you don't have your name there. So I can't call you by your name. I know it starts with a C, but I can't remember it. But I do remember you saying you're a healer that want to reach the masses. That's what I do remember. You're a healer that wants to reach the masses. Konia. Is it Konia? I tried to so much in general, but especially with so many different healing methods. Yeah, when you when people tell me they tried so much, I'm almost certain that they ain't done no pussy work. Oh, Kane. Look at that. Kane. Wow. And I, well, let me ask you this, Marina. Are you saying, why are you saying that? Is that in response to like, almost like an objection? Like, I don't want to sign up because I've done so much and I think this, right? Is that what you're saying there too? I want to make sure. Because if not, and if it's something else, I want you to tell me. I registered for the March 29th. I'm not sure if this is something different. So hi, Divine Flow. Um, the March 28th class is basically my opportunity to enroll you in what I'm talking about right now, just to be clear. We're going to have an experience there, and it's going to be great. And ultimately, if you want to maintain what's going to happen for you there, you want the power beyond just that, the one-time experience, I'm going to be inviting you into woman anyway. So if you already know you want woman based on, I don't know if you've been here for the last hour. I know you've been here before because your name is familiar. But if y'all been watching my content for the last, Lord knows, right? One, two, three months, and you still don't feel like this is for you, then it's not. I want women to come in who know this is for them. You, your life has already been changed by my content. It's already added a lot of value to your life. Your courage and confidence has already increased. You've already seen change. You already know yourself, trust yourself enough. You already know what you want enough, and you know this is for you. You don't need another fucking free thing. You don't need to go think about it, try and see. Gone, gone. You're not ready, and that's okay. 
Go to the link in my bio. So if you go up to the link in my bio and click it, it's going to show you four or five options. Okay. And the top option is womanhood initiation. I think the third option is woman. It just says woman. And that's where details are, and you can sign up for Woman right now for $99 a month. Do any of you have any questions about Woman? Because I want you to sign up right now while we're on the phone. Right now. And after you've signed up, come back and tell me you've signed up. I want five people signed up today. I'm going to send an email out to the community. I want five people signed up today. And I want the five of you for us to meet on Sunday. On Sunday, I have a master class at 9 a.m. So I want us to meet mm, noon. Let me see, 9, 10, yeah, noon. I want us to meet at noon Pacific on Sunday. I have a master class at 9 a.m. on Sunday. Then I want to take a break. And then for us to meet at 12 p.m. on Zoom so we can see and hear. And I want to hear what's going on with y'all. I want y'all to introduce yourselves. I want you to, um, uh, and I think we're going to play an alchemical game, which is basically going to be wherever you currently have fear, shame, and doubt, we're going to start dissolving it, killing it, getting rid of it, while having the connection of getting to know each other, talking about things that you don't talk about or you're scared to talk about, yeah, and I want us to have a conversation about what you need in the community. It's time for us to start connecting. Simple as that. And if you're not signing up, tell me why you're not signing up. <clears throat> if you're not signing up, tell me why you're not signing up. And I'm going to get ready to go. I love being here like this because it lets me connect. It lets me create content. <clears throat> I'm just waiting ah, for... Um, Specifically, Kane? Yeah, Kane. Oh, wow. I love that. Kane. What does that mean? Kane. Wow. Also, I'm going to end Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is just going. It's just sitting here just because I've been going. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, DM me. Bye-bye.